Hello and welcome to the Northeast region. This week we're going to be focusing on food from the Northeast, which is in the upper right hand part of the United States. <clears throat> and the food there is very rich and hearty. States that are included in the Northeast region include uh, Maine, New York, New Jersey, Vermont, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Hampshire, and Pennsylvania. So the food that we're going to be making this week from this region include baked beans, homemade, soft pretzels from scratch, and then New England clam chowder. So you're probably thinking, oh, this is this food is very rich and hearty. Yes, it is. And it is because the climate in the Northeast region is very similar to our climate in the Midwest. <clears throat> and um, so they have very cold winters, probably a little bit colder than ours, just because they're right by water. So that brings in a little bit more cold air. Um, and then they have very warm and humid summers, um, similar to ours. They also have fall and spring, <clears throat> and it's mild like ours, our weather. Uh, the Northeast region is divided into two subregions, which are called the Mid-Atlantic because they are by water. And then also by uh, the other region, subregion is called New England, which is where uh, New England clam chowder um, derives from. So the uh, state we're going to be focusing on today is Pennsylvania, which are is the state that actually manufactures um, pretzels, and that's where uh, the history of pretzels came from. Um, but before they were brought to Pennsylvania, they came from Germany, and German immigrants brought pretzels with them when they began settling actually in Pennsylvania. So we can thank uh, German immigrants for fabulous soft pretzels, which then led into the hard pretzel. So I have a little information to share with you. It's kind of fun. We're not going to watch the one on clam chowder. So um, here's just a little brief history on pretzels. You never stop, stop to stop. think about why a pretzel is shaped like that till the day you do. And then you're like, why is it shaped like that? The answer is obvious. Monks. 7th century monks. The holy men of the Middle Ages handed out little Lent-friendly baked goods to studious children who learned their prayers. These soft-baked dough knots were twisted into a shape meant to resemble arms when crossed in prayer. Some food historians even think these three holes were meant to symbolize the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The monks called them pretiola, Latin for little rewards. Italians called them by a similar sounding term, bracciola, with the more evocative meaning of little arms. When these little arms climbed over to the Alps into Germany, their name was deutschified to bretzel. And when German immigrants brought bretzel to the United States, that B was hardened into a P, and the European soft bretzel was hardened into the crispy, crunchy American pretzel. So, the next time you're digging into a bowl of pretzels, think of each one as a little reward from the monks of the Middle Ages. To you, for knowing the origin, down the road All right, and then next, here's the history of pretzels in Pennsylvania. It's become the largest pretzel bakery in the country. Founded by Harry V. Wareheim, Hanover Pretzel Company had at the time one product, a soft pretzel. Growth was slow and steady, but things really took off in the 60s with the purchase of a hard pretzel recipe. In the early 70s, Michael Wareheim, Harry's grandson and the company's current chairman, began testing the idea of calling the company's hard pretzel sourdough. And it was really once they named the product sourdough hard pretzels and Mike adopted a box uh, format for packaging the product that they started to be able to gain distribution really across the United States throughout the 80s. And it became the country's number one selling pretzels uh, through the mid 90s. Although Snyder's roots can be traced to the early 20th century, the pretzels' origins go back much further. We can trace the roots of pretzels back to 610 AD when uh, monks in a monastery in southern France uh, came up with the idea of utilizing the scraps left over from baking fresh bread. What he was basically trying to do was create the shape of children's uh, arms folded in prayer. Known as a pretiola. Latin for little reward, and was given to children once they had said their prayers. It doesn't take much to make a pretzel. 
Take some dough, <coughs> twist it, bake it, and presto, you've got a pretzel. But what if you wanted to make tons of pretzels an hour? Over here, we're in our twister section. This is where we make our sourdough hard pretzels. We're taking a chunk of dough, putting it in the hopper of this unit. In this hopper, there's also an auger that extrudes out a dough ball. It's rolled out between a series of rollers. Once we get a noodle rolled, there's two mechanical fingers that actually can tie the pretzel. That takes us from maybe 100 pounds an hour that might have been expected in the 30s when this first automation hit the category to today where we'll produce in many of these ovens over 2,000 pounds an hour. It'll take between 7 and 15 minutes for these pretzels to reach the oven. During that time, yeast converts fermentable sugars in the dough into the leavening gas, carbon dioxide, causing the dough to rise. You're doing two things in an oven. You're baking in the top zone, and in the bottom zone of the oven is a kiln or dry zone. During the baking process, you're also developing flavor and aroma at that point in time. Once you get to the end of the oven, can you drop your product into a kiln zone, which is a drying zone? The pretzels, which started with between 46 and 48 percent moisture, have had that baked down to between 16 and 19 percent in the top of the oven. In the bottom kiln zone, that will drop to between 4 and 5 percent. All right, so that gives you enough history of pretzels. So now I'm going to actually show you how to make some pretzels. All right, so if, without further ado, all right, so right there you can see. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is put on some gloves. My hands are washed. All right, so this pretzel recipe is super easy, and we are making soft pretzels. All right, um, it's uh, it is made with yeast, flour, and um, sugar for activation, and then we'll be boiling the pretzels before we bake them. So these are very these are made very similar to if you were making bagels, if you've made bagels before. So um, let me show you how it's done. So in my bowl, I'm going to combine one and a half cups of warm water. Okay, so it needs, it cannot be too hot or it will kill the yeast. And if it's too cold, it will take too long to activate. So lukewarm is perfect. <clears throat> to there, I have two and a quarter teaspoons of active dry yeast. I've already measured that, all right? And I'm just gonna, gonna stir that up with my whisk, start dissolving and you can already, I can already smell the yeast. And then to that, I'm gonna feed my yeast and I'm going to add brown sugar. So typically, if you recall from like pastry chef, you use white granulated sugar to activate yeast. You can also use honey, things like that, any sweetener. We're going to use brown sugar and it's just for more flavor. So brown sugar, if you recall, is uh, white sugar with molasses added and brown sugar is a packing sugar. And we actually need a quarter of a cup. So it's a, a good amount of sugar. So it's sweetness, and because of the molasses, it gives it more of like a savory taste. So I'm just going to kind of stir that up and start dissolving my sugar. And it gives it more of a dark brown color opposed because of the molasses, opposed to having a very vibrant white pretzel. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for a couple minutes just for this to start activating. How do you know activation is happening? You're going to see a lot of white foam. So right now when I look at this, I do see the foam, that, the air bubbles that I've created, but I see little white bubbles that are activating. And that just means that my water was under the right conditions and foam uh, activation is going to happen. All right. In the meantime, <clears throat> I have combined um, five cups of just regular uh, grain or granulated um, regular white flour, just all purpose flour. So I just use this all purpose flour. Um, you can also, for the best texture, um, instead of using all purpose flour, you could use bread flour and that's just going to give it more of a gummy texture. I am going to combine these two in a couple minutes once my uh, yeast activates a little bit more. So in the meantime, um, as I said, <clears throat> um, I need to, so I'm going to make my dough in a minute. I'm going to show you how to do that by hand, opposed to using a mixer. And then we um, let the dough rise or proof, which is, you know, it just doubles in size. And then we'll shape our pretzels 
Um, and then we are going to actually boil them before we bake them, all right? And um, I'm just gonna show you what I got together in here. So in my stock pot, I've combined four cups of regular, just sink water, and then I added one tablespoon of baking soda and one and a half teaspoons of baking soda. So this is an acid. And what it's, what's gonna happen is once this gets heated and it's boiling, I add in my shaped pretzel and it's going to puff up and you just let it puff up a little bit. And what's gonna happen is it starts the cooking process to give a good texture to the pretzel. And then because of the baking soda, it's gonna give the exterior crust a nice dark brown color, which is what we're looking for. That traditional German-like pretzel um, that the immigrants brought here. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so my foam has started to develop and you can see there's lots of white foam on the top. All right, so I'm going to add in all of that. All right, let me just get a rubber scraper. All right, I'm actually gonna use a spoon because I wanna get all that sugar. So now if you have a kitchen aid mixer at home, um, you can absolutely use that with the kneading attachment. But because most of us don't have kitchen aid mixers at home, I decided to make this just by hand. Okay, so start mixing this with a spoon. And then I'm actually gonna finish it off by hand, all right? Just like so. And I'm just starting to mix in the extra flour. So all flour reacts kind of differently depending on how, how old it is and how it's stored. So you might not need all five cups and I'll show you what I mean in a second. All right, so now we're gonna knead. So right on my surface here, I'm just gonna dump out what I have left. All right, so this is all shaggy dough, which is good. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to knead. So to remind you how to knead, you take the palm of your hand, okay? And you push like so, okay? Push and then rotate. So the objective here is I am starting to make my dough nice and smooth, all right? If it doesn't take in all this extra dough that's uh, or shaggy dough here, like the remnants, that's fine. You just won't use it, all right? So you're going to knead this until smooth and elastic for about five to 10 minutes. And I'm actually almost pretty good. All right. So what I like to do is the bottom, push and rotate, push and rotate. Just like so. If it's seeming a little, mine's a little bit drier than I'd like, which is fine. What I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna add a little bit of oil to my bowl. So instead of adding more water to the dough, which is what a lot of students do, just add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, vegetable oil to your bowl and just the bowl that you mixed. It could have flour in it. That's totally fine. This is actually pretty needed. So see how it like springs back like that? That's a good sign that it's been kneaded pretty well. All right, and then I'm just gonna take this oil and I'm just going to lightly toss it just like so. All right, I'm just gonna press this down. All right, now I'm going to let this rise <clears throat> for about a half hour. Um, at room temperature. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a towel and I'm just gonna put it over the top and uh, just let this rise at room temperature. If you're gonna be making this at school, <clears throat> you would put this in a baggie with that oil so it doesn't stick and you're gonna actually let it rise overnight in the refrigerator. It's called the cool rise method and then you put it down the next time you're at school, shape, boil, and bake. All right, so when I come back, after this is doubled in size, I'll show you how to double it in size. I will show you how to shape, boil in our prepped water, and then bake. All right, so we will be back. Thank you.
So we are back to the Northeast region and I have um, my dough doubled in size and I actually recorded this and, or I thought I was recording it and I, I forgot to press record. So um, what I did was I took my dough doubled, okay? So just as a recap, we took the dough, uh, to make the dough, we activated our yeast in warm water. We added two and a quarter teaspoons of our yeast to one and a half cups of warm water and then we added um, a quarter cup of brown sugar uh, just for flavor and then the sugar is the food for the yeast. Um, it activated, we combined it with five cups of flour and then we had our dough. The, I put a little oil on the dough just so it would act or proof, which is the second rise, put a towel over it and let it rise at room temperature. <clears throat> if you're doing this at school, it will it, you'll let it rise overnight, all right? And then what I did was I punched it down Pressed on my tabletop and I cut 12 pieces, all right? So it's really easy to work with um, freshly risen dough. It's a little harder to work with dough that's coming right out of the refrigerator. So if you're taking, if you're at school, you let it rise and now it's your day two, um, let it get to room temperature before you start shaping, all right? Because it's going to be easier for you to work with, all right? So just to show you, so I have my piece and I had it in a ball and now I'm rolling it into a log. You're gonna use your tabletop and you're gonna roll it into a nice even log. I would say about 16 inches, give or take. Use your hand to kind of help stretch it out. All right. <clears throat> in the meantime, I am boiling our four cups of water with one tablespoon of baking soda. Um, plus one and a half teaspoons of baking soda. Remember that chemical reaction um, will help uh, make the exterior of this soft pretzel uh, brown. So it's crisp on the outside and then nice and soft on the inside from boiling. So we're gonna take our two edges like so. And like we saw in our video, the monks were making our little hugging arms like so, just like so, all right. I'm gonna put that on a sheet pan lined with um, aluminum foil. If you want these to be consistent, you could weigh um, your dough uh, balls to make sure that they are the same, um, but we're not serving the public, so I'm not doing that. But if you were serving the public or you were selling these, you would want your shape and size to be very consistent. It's about two ounce uh, dough balls. All right, so I'm just going to do one more so you can get the idea. And then you want your shape to look as much consistency as you can. So I'm going to take my two edges. Uh, this one's a little thicker, so I'm just going to roll it a little more. All right, so take my edge here, press. Take my other edge here and press. If it's not perfect, it will pump up when you boil. Remember, we're boiling these, all right? You can attach them with water. You can just press them on, just like so. And I am going to transfer these to my boiling water. I'm gonna use a spatula, so let's come with me to our range. All right, so let me just swish this out. So I have my boiling water with my baking soda. All right, just like so. So what you're gonna do is you're going to <clears throat> take your pretzel, all right? And you're going to just lightly set it into the water and you're gonna let it cook, boil for about one minute. So what this is doing, this process, so this is the exact process of making bagels too. <clears throat> you boil your water with baking soda. What's gonna happen is now this water has an acid in it. So as it's boiling the dough, it's gonna start um, cooking the dough to make it nice and chewy. Um, and then that baking soda surrounds the outer exterior of the uh, pretzel, giving it the brown color, making it crispy on the outside and nice and chewy in the center because of the, the boiling method that we're using. So you're just gonna let it boil for about a minute. You can already see it puffing up. If you boil it too much, what ends up happening <clears throat> is the um, the pretzel actually falls apart. So you gotta be kind of careful with that. Moving around just a little bit. All right, in the meantime, I have preheated our oven to 475 
degrees and we're gonna bake these for about eight minutes. All right, so these are done. You can see I'm already plumped up. So very carefully, because you don't want them to come apart. You are going to place on your baking sheets, just like so. Okay, so that's nice and plump, just like so. All right, <clears throat> so you have a couple of different options, all right? So <clears throat> if you are gonna put salt on these, I am not. Um, you would adhere an egg wash. The egg wash makes the exterior nice and shiny, and then it also adheres the salt. If you're going to use salt, use a thick kosher uh, salt that's perfect for pretzels, not the table salt like iodized salt. You want the thick kosher salt, and just sprinkle a little on before baking. All right, um, and then um, you can plop them in the oven. All right, so this is what they look like going in. All right, and then I will show you what they look like when they are done. All right, so we'll be back. All right, so I am back to soft pretzels in the Northeast region. I just wanna show you what they look like. Um, so here we go. All right, so these are traditionally known as Bavarian pretzels. Um, so if you wanted them to be a little bit shinier, you could do the egg wash and then you could put a little salt. I just want mine plain and then it's nice and brown on the uh, other, at the back, back side of the pretzel. So enjoy, make sure you take a picture to submit your recipe. Thank you so much.